So a uh, little uh, jazz from Dave Brubeck uh, and to begin your morning, and I'll uh, uh, hopefully explain the connectivity between jazz and big data in a second, but um, I think one of the things that, uh, that's really fascinating about the world we're in now is just how relevant uh, different fields of science have become. And so when we talk about people's backgrounds, we've got a lot of data scientists, we've got one on our staff who uh, took macroeconomics from Ben Bernanke, and she's now running between doing healthcare gigs to uh, people doing retail to people doing government work. Uh, and it, her skill set is equally uh, adaptable to all of these different disciplines. So I think it's fascinating to look at just how relevant uh, a lot of interesting scientific disciplines are becoming. But uh, what we're going to talk about is, is what is the big deal uh, with big data? You know, it's certainly one of the questions that comes off people's minds first. And I think what we've done is create a term that captures the urgency and the nature of, of processing big data. Uh, it's definitely a squishy term, but I think it captures the idea that there's something going on and it's quite different. And there is a big deal about big data. Uh, and what it really means is that it's, it's a door that's opening on a new realm of technologies and big data and how we use them in our everyday pursuit of business. Um, and in particular, it's about engaging our customers and making decisions using the data that, that's streaming in from all around. Certainly, everybody's aware that data is, is growing in, in incredible volumes. There's machine-generated data. But if you look at it as an expression of, of interactivity or an expression of how active people are in terms of reaching out, it's an explosion of interest and it's an explosion of activity that we're all really seeking to capture. So there is definitely something big about big data. It's about opening this new approach and, and approaching customers and business in a very fundamentally different way. So big data, is it classical or is it jazz? Uh, you'd think that it would be a challenging query to put, type into a, a new Google search engine, but uh, I think the key thing about, uh, about music is that it really has gone through a real progression. And if you look at the way that music used to be formed, it was, it was formed as an orchestra. It was a linear presentation of music, much like art in, in many other kinds, and was designed in a way that it could be broadcast to very large audiences, but it was always the same. And the idea there is that, that if you are in a world where people's expectations are always changing and adapting and, and, and such, you need to play a different tune. You need to be working on adaptation. And really, jazz was, was a way to connect with audiences. And every jazz performance is different. And the idea of adaptation is really kind of a fundamental element of this new big data world. And, and of course, I'm really talking about how does uh, technology like machine learning uh, represent uh, a way in which we could adapt to the interactions that are coming into our businesses. And how can we take a new approach to really engaging customers that understands what they're looking for and every interaction is customized to those particular customers that we're, we're seeking. So I think we have to look ahead and say that organizations are going to ha have to start behaving much more like jazz and play jazz instead of playing orchestras. Um, so I think another question that comes up, you know, is the, their added value, if I've got 10 times more, more data, do I get 10 times more value? And this whole insanity thing kind of comes up. And I, I think there are so many different ideas around this. Um, first of all, you know, unappreciated player kind of buried in a sea of stats. How can we take that, uh, that statistic that represents some measure of capability and find a way to bring that out? And I think, you know, in this case, there's another analogy, which is uh, people who are, are players within organizations that may have special attributes. In this case, this guy's an opportunity factory. You know, he takes the ball and he makes it, it possible for more people to take that and use it. So um, I think the key thing is that, that one of the success stories that we're seeing replayed over and over is the data that was formerly discarded, the data that is, that is voluminous, so big and so difficult, uh, has all of a sudden become a gateway to finding new value in unanticipated ways. It's, it's the gold in the mountain of dirt, but even further, I think that, that when people start digging deeper, they start finding insights they didn't anticipate. And so I do believe that, that the volume of data is, is creating new opportunities because the technologies are making it possible. So then the question becomes, all right, which technologies? And uh, you know, I, I think it, it, you might say it's, it's kind of a waste of a great deal of uh, technology to have your robot pour tea for you. Um, but if you look at this, it, again, it's the idea of, uh, I have a, a vast array of technologies that can be brought to bear to solve the problem. 
what are the right ones, and, and how do I choose? And in particular, you know, if you look at, at one of the most significant new in, uh, innovations around big data, it's Hadoop. But Hadoop, what is Hadoop? Uh, Hadoop is a whole array of, of, of different kind of modular capabilities. And it, it really comes down to how do I put those together in the right combination to actually achieve my end result. Uh, I think there are certain attributes we have to look at. And, and going forward, uh, this will be no surprise, but I think if you take the idea of scale out, uh, we have to be prepared for a world where we could go from 10 customers to a million customers to 10 million customers in a, in a very short period of time. And so the notion, of course, we talk about storage. And, and I think when we look at storage, it's about how do I take all of that data in, but more than storing it, I have to be in a position to compute on that data. So the notion of a computable storage layer that is a scale-out uh, layer is really revolutionizing and changing the nature of the way we think about storing data. It's an integral part of the computing layer. So you bring those two things together, you have computable storage, you have computing that can make sense and use that data, and then you come to analytics, and, and analytics and interaction become intertwined. When you think about how I have to get to where I can adapt interactively with people that are interacting with my services, I need to fuse those layers where analytics become an, a part of the interaction. And again, the idea is that these have to be scale-out technologies. So when we look at uh, the scale-out nature of business and the way that we're approaching this big data world means that we really have to reevaluate the way that we actually build systems, and that goes all the way from what was OLTP to the back-end systems that are actually uncovering these insights. So uh, another question is, you know, are we simply passing through a kind of hype or a buzz, or is this something that's going to really have a lasting impact? And when we look around, uh, I think you can certainly see that there has already been a massive impact of big data on the way that we interact with the world. Uh, and if you, it, one, of, one author, you know, William Gibson said, you know, the future is here, it's just not equally distributed. If we look around, we can see, certainly see there are so many examples of companies that have really grasped the opportunity of big data and they have created new value. And if you roll this forward and we think about adaptation and how it impacts business, uh, there is really a new normal that we're talking about here. And if you're a retailer or if you're a telco or if you're in social and you're dealing with mobile customers and they're becoming ever more powerful in the way that they interact with the world, you have to match that, that power and that interactivity with the same kind of infrastructure that can adapt. And that's just a new normal. That's the way we are living today. Uh, and so agility and predictive big data capabilities, predictive, you know, if we look around, you know, the future right now is, is in these companies that are already moving into machine learning. They're already implementing dynamic model construction in anticipation of cus customers that are moving through different types of trajectories with the business. If we look at the, the most successful internet companies in the internet services business, they're there. Whereas I'd say the rest of the enterprise business world is actually just getting to the point where they can leverage the back-end analytic infrastructure, and they're not quite to the point yet where they're thinking about how to change their whole OLTP or transactional infrastructure yet. They're just moving into that realm. So there is definite urgency with which we're approaching this. The survivors will get to the predictive, dynamic, interactive systems, and they will use that to mine new value and to create deeper customer relationships in the way that they operate. So I think that, that we are in a world where big data is a reality. I think the organizational change that we will see and that we are seeing already is profound, and so I think you guys are at the right place at the right time, and uh, absolutely thrilled to be here at, at Strata. So, and with that, uh, enjoy the jazz and enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you.